Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to The Huddle, the Review.com's weekly high school sports show. I'm Rob Toder, joined as always by Mike Brown. And before we get to football, Mike, let's congratulate the St. Thomas Aquinas girls cross country team for Division Three state championship. Yeah, I was there to cover that, Rob. That was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, there's such a tight knit community at St. Thomas, and the kids are are so. I mean, you interview them, and it's like it's just wonderful. That's just a really good situation there. They've got so much talent, and I wouldn't rule out that that same group that won the cross country title will come back in the spring and repeat as a Division Three girls track champions too. I mean, I think they're that good. Uh, really a good weekend for all the, the uh, area runners mm -hmm. in Columbus this weekend. It sure was. You know, we had Louisville finishes fourth in the state in Division One. I. I mean, they're competing against teams like Sola and, and, and Big Mason and schools like that. Uh, so they finished fourth in the state. The St. Tom boys cross country team finished state runner-up. So, you know, both St. Tom teams, they took home a state championship trophy for the girls, state runner-up trophy for the boys. So it was a great weekend for our area. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations to all those young mm -hmm. men and women. Let's, move, let's turn our attention now to football. Uh, we have two teams left in the high school football playoffs, the Salem Quakers in Division Four, with a, a nice victory at Indian Valley on uh, last Saturday, and the Louisville Leopards, who uh, I think surprised a lot of people, mm -hmm. who not only the people that thought Poland might repeat their dominant performance from last year's playoffs, but the Louisville fans and, and people who thought Louisville had a chance to win that at Poland, I don't think anybody saw that 42 to seven score that that Louisville posted uh, on Friday night in Poland. So, a couple of tough matchups for those teams though this weekend. Let's start with Louisville, and they will face Akron Hoban in the Division Three regional semifinals at Green High School. And uh, we know Hoban uh, very highly touted until a Week Nine loss to Cleveland Benedictine. Right, and Benedictine is is the real deal too. So those are just two quality football teams there. But I, I was very impressed with Louisville last weekend. I mean, they had their air game working. They've got the nice running game, like we talked about before. The thing that makes them different from past Louisville teams, Louisville had okay running games before, but great passing attacks. Now they've got the great passing attack and a great running attack too with Razul Young. And, and, you know, so you can't sit on any one facet of their game, and I think that has really helped them. And, and I think that game will be a lot better than people think. Obviously, Hoban's the favorite in that game, at least the computer projections say they are. Uh, but I wouldn't rule Lewis out anything. If there's a couple turnovers on Hoban's part, that could be a great equalizer in a game like that. Yeah, and I think the big thing for Louisville, getting off to a good start, mm -hmm. uh, not having the turnovers, right. as you said, because with uh, Hoban, again, they can – you know, they put 49 points yeah. on Ken McKinley in the season opener yeah. and, and just rolled from there. Uh, Danny Clark, former Maslin quarterback, yeah. is their quarterback. And so, I mean, they, they are a confident team. They struggled a little bit, though, against New Philadelphia yeah. in week one. Their defense has given up points the last two weeks. Now, one of those one of those games was against Benedictine, so obviously, you know, again, really good football team. But last week, I believe they gave up 21 points to New Philly. Uh, which is a little surprising, but you know that. And I, I've seen some of the social posts this week that you know some of the Hoban fans are a little concerned with their defense, which been so good through the regular season, but in the last two weeks has given up some significant points. So you know it, it'll come down to something like that. Louisville is going to have to take advantage of the opportunities it gets because it probably won't get as many as it would you know playing in the NBC. Uh, so and I think it comes down to that. I really do. I think you know if they can keep that game. If they can keep that game around the low 20s, I think they've got a shot. Mm -hmm. Now, if it gets you know out of hand, if it gets hit in the 30s or 40s, you don't want to get in a shooting match, I, I think, with a team like Hoban. Yeah, okay. Well, in Division Four, Salem, uh, as we said, with a, an impressive w victory on the road at Indian Valley mm -hmm. uh, last week in the first round of the playoffs, and now they get to face the number one seed in the region, the Steubenville Big Red, uh, and that game will be played at Minerva High School on Saturday evening. So... We know Stoomville traditionally uh, always a very good football program. Reno Sackotch, the head coach there. Uh, you have discovered this might be one of their better teams. Right, yeah, that's what we're hearing, that this is one of the better, most athletically gifted teams Stoomville's had in a long time. And uh, they've just been very consistent all this year. I mean, their, their results have been, I mean, they've, they've been one side almost the entire year. And, uh, you know, one other thing I would mention to all fans from both teams on Friday night, get there early because Minerva Stadium holds about 5,000. And with my past experiences when I've covered uh, Steubenville, they usually bring about five or 6,000 people just their self, if not more. So get there early. You know, that's a 7 o'clock start on Saturday night. Uh, but I would recommend to get there early. 
Yeah, this thing for Salem, I think, obviously, uh, the, the the strong running attack mm -hmm. that they have, and uh, I'm I'm guessing their their game plan is control the clock, yeah. keep the big red offense off the field, uh, and try to put points on the board. And, and again, you talk about uh, a key, you know, no turnovers, no penalties, don't get behind. Uh, down in distance mm -hmm. uh, and, and control the clock and, and uh, see what, you know, take the game into the fourth quarter. Right. And I'll tell you another thing people have overlooked with Salem the last few years. They have a phenomenal, I just, a phenomenal uh, weightlifting coach who has those guys on a program. And Salem is a strong football team on both sides of the line. And I think that's really helped them. I think that helped them in the West Branch game because West Branch had been able to, you know, kind of have the, the drive blocking go on in all the earlier games. But I think they kind of neutralized that and it got them past West Branch. And I think that same thing happened last week because Indian Creek had, if not mistaken, one over 1,000-yard runner and another guy who was close to that and a third guy who had like 700 yards rushing. And Salem did a great job of holding them to, I believe, six points for the entire game. So I, I think that's something where... Salem can match up in the trenches. I think they have to, again, like the Louisville game, they have to keep it low scoring, not when they played Louisville, but like we were talking about in Louisville's recent game. They need to keep it low scoring and take advantage of the opportunities they get, too, offensively. Okay. Well, make sure you check out the Alliance Review on the review.com all week. We'll have previews on these games and feature stories, and we'll have live coverage Friday night and Saturday night as well. And make sure you check out the print edition on Saturday and Monday for all the coverage of those games. And good luck to the Quakers and the Leopards uh, as they attempt to move on in the playoffs. So for Mike Brown, this is Rob Toder. We'll talk to you next week.